Hello everybody, I'm Jordan and I'm Linda and we uh, run Veg Athletics training and performance. So today we're just going to go as our first joint one that we've done and we're going to do a QA and a with some common questions that we get. Uh, you're going to hear my perspective, you're going to hear Linda's perspective, we're going to bounce off a little bit. So I'll go first. Um, I work with, I specifically work with a lot of athletes so one of the questions I get, and just generally for Gen Pop people, is what's the difference between uh, training as an athlete and training uh, just a general population kind of fitness person. Um, I'm a believer that everybody should train like an athlete, get your body moving in different planes of motion, uh, work in movements that are explosive. A lot of people as they age kind of lose their explosive qualities, so if you can keep practicing that, you get better and better and better. Uh, or you lose less and less and less as you age. Um, and then, you know, just uh, making workouts fun, making workout challenging. Uh, with athletes, the structure is a little bit different. With my athletes, usually we're always gonna do a primer. So a primer is something explosive that you do to turn on your nervous system right at the beginning of a session. So if, if you do, if we're gonna do push-ups in a session, a primer might be a medicine ball throw. Then you take that, that pushing movement, you do something that's really explosive, and your body's gonna turn on higher threshold motor units. So if you could, if you just went into the push-ups, you might get tired at 15 reps, but when you turn on those higher threshold units, that 15 reps might turn to 16, 17, 18, 19 reps because you've, your brain is recruiting uh, higher threshold muscle. So a primer is always key. I'm also doing prehab, especially with with uh, athletes, depending on the sport. Each sport has its own injuries. So for my swimmers, I'm looking out for their hips and their shoulders. For uh, my figure skaters, I'm looking out for their knees, for their feet, for their spines, their backs. Um, and it's gonna be similar with a gen pop person. Most people, maybe you grew up playing sports or whatever your job is, that's what your body kind of adapts to. So if you, if you sit at a desk all day, or you drive all day, or if you're on your feet all day, there's different demands in terms of what we need to do to strengthen your body in those different planes. So those are kind of the different things. I think everybody should be doing mixed sessions. We do a little bit of cardio, you do a little bit of strength work. Um, that's something I'm always gonna do with my athletes. Maybe sometimes for the gen pop people, not so much, but most people, you're gonna need both. And um, for, for my athletes, it's, you, you take that break in between, right? You're, you're gonna do maybe your interval training, your sprints or whatever it is, take a little bit of break and then you should still be able to go in and execute and do your weight training and do really well with that stuff. So, my first question there is your my answer. Do you have any input on that? Um, yeah, for general population, generally that's the population I'm working with and a lot of the people that I work with, they're sitting at their desks a lot, so I'm getting them to also do a lot of mobility work, um, which is also important for athletes, but especially important if you're hunched over on your desk all the time, you wanna make sure you're um, working your lower back, so smaller muscles. So we're focusing more on hypertrophy um, as well as cardio and all that stuff, but definitely adding in a little bit more mobility and getting them to stretch out. Gotcha. Your, um, uh, question you got yeah. There. So my first question is, what should you eat before your workout and um, how much protein should you have after your workout? So this is gonna be um, very different for each person depending on your goals, how often you're working out, what your workout looks like, how intense it is, how many reps you're doing. But a general, um, a general guideline is to have something in your stomach before going into a workout. Something small like a piece of fruit, a banana, an apple. Um, something so that you're not feeling hungry, but not necessarily to have like a huge meal. After your workout, your post-workout meal is the most important meal to have. You want to make sure that you're getting in some sort of protein so that it helps with your recovery. Um, you also want to have that within 20 to 60 minutes after you eat. Um, and if you can't get in real food, real food is definitely the most important um, aspect when it comes to like your, uh, your meals. If that is not possible, um, then I would say like a protein shake is um, also a great substitute. I personally also do that just because of the commute home. I don't have that time for um, a, a full meal, but a full meal is definitely ideal for that. Do you have anything? I would say it's a little overblown. Uh, people kind of overthink that too much. We eat a lot more than we need to. Most people don't need to eat the amount of food that they are eating. So 
post or sorry pre workout a piece of fruit is ideal. I I do not like to be hungry while I'm training. So if I'm hungry and I'm in a tough workout, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, so it's just something that you're not feeling hungry and yeah, after you're done training, you want to get in your protein, your carbs to kind of recharge. Um, and but that but that depends on the length and the intensity of the workout. I think a lot of people a lot of people need their workouts to be a little bit more intense. So you're doing stuff safely. You should be pushing yourself out of your comfort zone every workout. And then those are workouts where you're going to need to recharge or you say, okay, let me get some sweet potatoes in me. Let me get a little bit of rice in me along with your, uh, your protein sources for sure. Um, what I have is what is the best program to get jacked? So just putting muscle on your body, trying to reduce body fat. Pretty simple stuff. I would, uh, again, combine your, your cardio and your weight training. So, uh, do some get out and do some sprints maybe once a week some hill sprints for somebody who's not used to it and and that would be that those are short workouts so sprints up and down a hill is a minute um maybe 10 sets like that taking your time and breaks in between turns your body into a real furnace um and and three probably three days a week do full body weight training vary your exercises but hit those uh hit the, your every body part multiple times a week and you're gonna build muscle at the same time in those training sessions in those cardio sessions sorry your body's gonna be burning body fat do you do your cardio first or do it on a different day and then do your weight training after so your, your body's gonna leave with the muscle building stimulus one mistake people can make is doing a lot of weight training and then doing cardio after and you kind of kill that stimulus so order it correctly but uh that that's a pretty simple way to make sure okay i'm building muscle i'm burning body fat and I'm gonna look really good. Yeah, you said I know. I do know. <laughs> Go ahead. So for my second question is, um, how long will it take for me to see results? This is gonna vary from person to person, depending on your goals, depending what you're eating, depending on your sleep habits. Like there's so many factors that go into this. Um, but just to keep it simple, if you are newer to working out, so you haven't really worked out in the past, it's been a long time since you've worked out, you are going to see the results the soonest. So within four to six weeks, you're gonna start seeing results. You're gonna start seeing that you're a little bit slimmer, your pants are fitting a little bit looser. Um, you, start, you might start to see a little bit more tonus. Um, but this also like is in factor with what you're eating too. Um, if you are more advanced, if you're an actual athlete, it's gonna take a little bit longer to see results just because your body's already used to it and you're gonna have to push yourself a little bit harder. Anything you wanna add? Yeah, for sure. Um... It's tough to say, probably the smaller you are, the faster you're gonna see a, a reduction of whatever five pounds. So a small person, a small woman, is, it's a big difference. So you probably see that difference. Um, but if, if you're sticking with the ch changes you make to your diet and changes you make in your training, uh, three to four weeks, yeah, you're gonna see a difference. And obviously the more advanced you get, it is, uh, you almost, you get to a point where there's, <clears throat> you're, you're really fighting to make tiny, tiny improvements. So it, it, it is, uh, that's why I'm a big fan of having a training log and writing down everything down in detail, especially how things feel and that, um, especially from, a, from an athletic uh, performance perspective, makes a big difference. I would also add if you're more advanced getting a coach um, because they're able to find out, like the smallest little details. Like I noticed when I uh, got a coach who was really on top of me, they started programming things that made it a little bit more challenging for me for a little bit more that I'm not used to um, and pushed me out of my comfort zone so that I could see the results that I was looking for. For sure. Sometimes other people are going to do your measurables better than uh, you would or in a different way that you would yeah. think. Uh, this is a really kind of similar to the one you got is, is uh, what is the ideal post-workout nutrients you're looking for after you work out. Um, and I'm going to say carbs is, is restoring uh, muscle glycogen. One that I always recommend to people is sweet potato. Sweet potato is uh, really ideal. Your body takes it up really well. Um, I'd add some chickpeas in there too. Chickpeas have a lot of carbs and a lot of protein as well, so that's mm. something I like to have in. Gotcha, yeah. So if you're doing, uh, the, other, the other one, sorry, is uh, especially if you're sweating a lot, is coconut water. So doing coconut water and, and coconut water is a tremendous, um, a tremendous way to rehydrate. It helps your body rehydrate really well, better than anything else I can think of, better than Gatorade, better than water. So uh, yeah, do some coconut water if you're getting in a sweaty workout. 
Uh, for me, it's what kind of stretches should I do before my workout? This is going to be uh, a combination of dynamic stretches and static stretches. You want to make sure that your body's moving in full range of motion. You want to make sure that your body is nice and warm before you get into any lifts, um, especially if you are doing powerlifting, like the uh, powerlifting, which is benching, uh, squats, and deadlifts. You want to make sure that you're nice and warmed up for that. Or even if you're doing any high intensity like rep ranges, you want to make sure that your body's nice and warmed up before you go into it, or else you can strain muscles. Um, do you want to add? Yeah, so the, so the common thing, or the cool thing became only do dynamic stretching, don't do static stretching before you train. Um, and it's probably gone a little too far. Because people, are like, people are anti-static stretching. And a big key is uh, static stretching, doing longer holds, especially with some nice, calm, relaxed breathing. You can make a, a short-term change in the tissue, right? You can... Stack, I can statically stretch my shoulders and get into an external rotation position that I wouldn't previously be able to get into. So static stretching is helpful in that regard. And if you do it before you train, you can, while you're working out, you can then use that range. And that's how you get mobility and flexibility back. You have to create that little bit of extra range of motion, and then you want to move in it actively. So I'm not anti-static stretching. There are, if you're doing extremely explosive activity, activities and again this is probably geared more towards uh, an athlete population if you're doing a tough swim session if you if I'm gearing up for a 600 pound squat I'm not gonna stretch my hamstrings as hard as I can because I need them I need a certain bit of tightness and rebound in the tissue right so it's a maximal sprint things of that nature if you're doing something absolutely maximal where you're trying to create the most force possible through that muscle don't probably don't want a static stretch but uh, for the average person and even for the average athlete at the average practice, um, focusing on certain areas, how can I create more range in my hips and use that? How can I create more range in my shoulders and use that? How can I create less tension in my back and use that? I, th I think it is, uh, it is useful, it has a place. So, both of them. Yeah. Last question, we got. Uh, quickest way to get in shape? It's extremely simple. We, we, we complicate things so much, but uh, I think I mentioned later the, uh, earlier the best way to, to get jacked, it's something similar to that. So reduce your, or cut out processed foods and processed sugar. Uh, you're still gonna reduce the amount of carbs you're eating, your bread, your rice, that kind of stuff. Try to have that in the latter half of the day or after you work out, ideally. Um, drink more water. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. You can start getting in the range of seven to nine hours of sleep. Most people, or a lot of people are underslept. Uh, and then full body workouts at a minimum three days a week. You should be moving your body every day. Those other days is maybe doing some yoga, going for a walk, going for a bike ride. But uh, it should be three structured workouts a week where you're hitting every muscle group and you're, and you're pushing your body as well in terms of uh, conditioning. So you're getting on a rower, doing some swimming, doing some sprints. Um, if you do those things, and, you, and take control of your diet, take control of your, your sleep and your water, and things like that, you're gonna be in tremendous shape. You're gonna look great. And then we can, as you get more advanced, we can build from there. Then there's more specific things to play with. Yeah. The last question I have is, how do you find time to train with a busy schedule? I've, uh, I made a, um, a post recently about what is important to you, you'll always make time for. And if getting in the best shape of your life is important to you, you're going to schedule it. It doesn't matter how busy you are. It doesn't matter if you're a mom, if you are a CEO of a company, if it's important to you, you're going to schedule it in. What I tell my clients, what I do is I have an agenda and I set a time each week, each day. I look at the days that I have, the, uh, the times that I have available and I schedule it in as if it's a work meeting. If you are scheduling it in and you know ahead of time, okay, I need to be at the gym at this time, I'm going to work out at this time, you already are prepared and ready to get into that mode that, okay, I have this scheduled in, I'm going to do it. Also, having an accountability person, um, telling someone, hey, I'm going to hit the gym today, letting them know, it gives you some accountability, which then makes you want to do it and you're going to schedule it in more. If you have a goal, a big goal that you want to set and you tell someone, you're more likely to, uh, to go forward and do the things that are necessary to make it happen um, so that you don't let that person down and you don't let yourself down. So scheduling it is definitely a huge part of it. Um, 
and letting the people around you know so that you have support so that people can motivate you and you can feel empowered to do it even on a busy schedule so whether that's getting up a little bit earlier maybe going after work maybe when the kids are asleep finding a gym that's 24 hours so you can go at a time that's convenient for you but just making it work yeah for sure uh you make time for the stuff that you value and uh your health should be high on that list you can't take care of other people if you're not taking care of yourself so for sure yeah all right guys that's our first q a uh if you have any more questions hit us up jordan at vegathletics.ca or linda at vegathletics.ca and let us know we'll be back with more peace <laughs>